Margaret River in the southwestern corner of Western Australia, home to one of the greatest surf breaks in the world. Follow the Margaret River inland and you will find a bustling market town with a unique relaxed atmosphere. This laid back town is home to thriving farmers markets, boutique brewers and wine producers that are recognised all over the world. It sits in the middle of the Luana Naturalist National Park, a limestone ridge covered by thousands of hectares of native bush. It is this landscape that draws mountain bike riders from all over the world to Margaret River. Over 1,100 riders have made their way southwest and over the next four days, they will experience the best the region has to offer both on and off the bike. This is the Cape to Cape, Australia's best known, largest and most well-loved mountain bike stage race. This is the 14th edition of the Cape to Cape mountain bike stage race. And though many things have changed over the years, one thing has remained consistent, the start. The iconic Cape Lewin Lighthouse overlooks both the Indian and Southern Oceans. It is the southernmost point of the Lewin Naturalist Ridge and the ideal starting point for this four day mountain bike stage race. It's often blustery and wild, but the 1,100 assembled riders couldn't be happier to be there. For the international and out of state riders, this is the first time in three years that they've been able to attend the much loved event. This is the race in Australian mountain biking, the one everyone wants to tick off, whether they are 16 or 60 years of age. 60 plus, and um, there's only five in my category, and I know two of the girls that I race with, um, and the other two I don't know. So, be interesting. <laughs> Always fun. Uh, so, yeah, it was my first year last year. I just thought I'd enter to have a bit of fun, uh, do a bit of mountain biking, and I uh, managed to pull off the win in the solo women's category last year. So yeah, it was pretty good. Decided to join in uh, with Elliot for the mixed pairs, so pretty tight competition and we'll just see how we go with some of the best riders in the state and also from over east. So a few big names, looking forward to seeing how we um, match up with them. The lifting of COVID travel restrictions is most evident in the elite field where the men's, women's and mixed pairs look set for a highly competitive week. Yeah, really good. I think we worked out last night, this is my eighth, seventh or eighth cape actually. Uh, but only second in a, in a mixed pair, so we are a little bit nervous about where the form's at, but excited to be here. We love coming over to Margaret River. I, I really enjoy the uh, pairs format because I don't have to go quite as hard as what I would generally if you just got a pair with Peter. <laughs> well, that's what I think anyway. Standards are bars that really low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't get an opportunity to race together very often, so we've come over here, we're staying, I think we've got 10 people in our house and staying with all our competitors who are also our friends and yeah, just nice to be back at bike races. Yeah, I'm racing with Adam over here. Uh, first time racing in a pairs event together, but we've had a lot of experience in road races and gravel races uh, in the past few years. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think we've both got our own strengths and our own weaknesses, but I think together we'll make a great team. So, like, I had a little look at the start list. It looks like everyone that I raced back in 2018, like everyone, everyone seems to have come across for it. It's a great event, so it's like, yeah, we'll want to be here. Devin said it's all right. Here. I'm nervous again on the start line. Always the same thing. Whatever the race is, I get nervous. Yes. So here we go. It's good to get it started, get on those trails. It's always good to get the first one out of the way. For the elites at the front of the line and the everyday riders behind, the attraction of the Cape to Cape is largely the same. I love mountain bike riding, I love Augusta, I love the South West. So it's good fun, good friends, good times. That's it. And they are off. And uh, racing. It is a control start in the front, so don't get frantic. Good, how are you? Oh, yeah, not bad. I'll find out in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Over 1,100 riders roll out onto what has become the most iconic stage of the Cape to Cape. The lighthouse in the background of the first climb up Skippy Rock Road leaves no doubt as to where they are. 
For the teams with GC ambitions, there's no easing into the Cape to Cape. You arrive at the start line, ready to get on the gas, or you get dropped. It's a long, steep climb up from sea level to the top of the ridge that gets the blood pumping and sets the stage for what is to come. The Cape to Cape is a four-day stage race. It takes the riders on a journey from the south to the north along the Lewin Naturalist Ridge. The stages are designed to take advantage of the absolute best scenery, trails and single track the area has to offer, finishing the week at Cape Naturalist, completing the trip from Cape to Cape. Stage one is known as the one with all the hills. It's designed to test the riders' legs and help them find their place in the field. After today, they will be seeded into faster and slower waves for the next few days. Just 12 kilometres into the race and the elite field has blown to bits. The giant Shimano Australia pairing of John Odoms and Brendan Johnson have put the hammer down right from the start and are riding away from the chasing teams. Behind them, the giant Australia off-road pair of Reese Tucknot and Adam Blazovich are digging deep to prevent the leaders riding off into the distance up the road. A few seconds behind, the Trek Comtel duo of Telly Lane Welsh and Joel Green are holding on with solo GC leader Mark Chong on their wheel. For the rest of the field, today is just about getting through in one piece, physically and mechanically. There are four days of racing ahead and everyone wants to be at the finish line at Cape Naturalist. The solo riders have only themselves to worry about, but pairs racing brings a different dimension to mountain biking. It can be a challenge for old friends, let alone new acquaintances. How old when I Cat? I met Cat face to face at about midnight on Monday night when I arrived off a plane from New Zealand. <laughs> pairs racing is, is different. You've got to have somebody that's sort of semi-matched with you in temper and skill set and pee schedule and, you know, just someone that you want to spend four days with on the trail. So we hope it's going to stick, um, but I've never done it before, so we'll see. So the days for me are probably going to be some of the longest rides that I've actually done on my bike, um, I think particularly day two and three. Um, and it's probably going to be the first time I've done four days of tough riding back to back, which is also going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Before we entered, we sort of had a chat about expectations, like let's be really honest, what are you hoping for, what, are we, what kind of work are we going to do, are we going to take this seriously or are we going to sandbag? Um, and I think that's really honest to set that up beforehand and then you don't have anyone that's resentful if you've, if you've had that conversation. I hope that we can finish, um, be proud of how and, and where we finish time-wise, have a good time, still be friends at the end of the week would be good. Um, what I'm most afraid of, I think secretly still of being the weakest link. She rides some gnarlier conditions in New Zealand that I do, so um, hopefully I don't stack at GoOTB and embarrass myself. <laughs> oh, yes. Whoa! Just think, only three more days of this, hey! There are as many downhill sections as uphills on stage one, but the climbs are what everyone remembers. With almost a thousand metres of climbing, this is where a great teammate can be worth their weight in gold. Oh mate, much harder than uh, than you think. Uh, I thought maybe we'd get there two and a half hours, but it's looking more like three hours some change. But uh, now we get in there, one pedal stroke at a time. I think you wouldn't be able to get up here in a two-wheel drive car, so call this e-bike hill, I reckon. This is my twelfth year. Yeah. And, and it never gets any easier, by the way. But it's always really good fun. I always love doing it, and there's so many good people, and I can see lots of repeat people here this year as well. The first riders to catch sight of the iconic lighthouse again are the giant Shimano Australia duo. John Odens and Brendan Johnson cross the finish line in one hour, 17.42. It's a great start for the pair who won the event last time they were here back in 2019. Reese Tucknot and Adam Blazovich cross the line one minute and one second later. 
MV Otto and Carl Michelin Veer take the first stage win in the mixed pairs. They edge out Peter Mullins and Jared Moroni by 20 seconds with the third place duo RCC three and a half minutes behind. Uh, it was good fun. A lot more climbing than I remember. Um, I think the mixed category is a very competitive field and um, yeah, it's a lot of fun and, and that's what you want, isn't it? It was a tough day, yeah, really hard day actually. The weather wasn't, you know, super nice, but it was, the course was, I didn't mind the course today. I think it was really tacky because of the rain or something, but tough day, actually, tough start. DBBM Lucy van der Scholk and Ella Bloor round out the main categories, winning stage one by a healthy four minutes. Pairs Racing is back with a vengeance at the Cape to Cape in 2022, both in the elite and the general categories. Team M Sisters come through stage one in two hours and 40 minutes. The smiles at the finish are proof that setting your expectations ahead of the race can be key to team harmony. Racing in a team, um, we've got to be within two minutes of each other at all times. So there's no value in sending somebody faster up the road to get a faster time. Your time is taken when the second person crosses the line. So you're there to help each other out um, and, and finish together. And that's, that's the bond and the difficult bit, I guess, with, a, with racing with a pair. Um, but it's twice as many pieces of spare kit. It's twice as many hands to fix stuff if you need to. Um, and, you know, there's somebody to to balance out the mental side of it as well. You're not sitting in your own head going, why did I do this? This is really hard. You know, you're encouraging someone else and that that should make for a more positive uh, headspace experience as well. Oh, now you know you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Day two of the Cape to Cape Dawn's perfect and the riders gather at Mr Barvel Wines on the outskirts of Margaret River. The event has become much more than a race, it's a destination in its own right that riders return to year after year. Oh, I think this event is always going to be a favourite. It's, it's at a cool time of year where the weather's nice. It's just such an inclusive environment where everyone just can come and enjoy what Margaret River has to offer. And the event team put on a phenomenal event, whether it's here or in Cairns or um, in Newcastle, it's always good. I raced last year with um, Cam Ivory, my partner, and there was it was lovely for us to be here, but the numbers um, in the elites weren't the same, so it's really nice to have that environment back and have everyone back fighting for the jerseys. <laughs> yeah, look, we've still been racing a bit, uh, doing all the stuff on the East Coast, but it's, a, it's, it's really good to be back. It's really different here, uh, different to the East Coast, so it's always fun to be here. As well as the draw of completing the Cape to Cape, a number of riders are here for the Triple Crown, a special award for finishing all three epic series stage races, reef to reef, port to port and Cape to Cape. Yeah, this is our uh, tour event in the epic series, so we're getting our uh, Triple Crowns after this. We started off with reef to reef, uh, we did that in 2018 and then did port to port in 2019. And then, um, yeah, COVID stopped us travelling after that. So we're back here to get the uh, crown and go home and retire. This is probably our last race as well. So <laughs> we got motorbikes now. So. <laughs> Stage two of the Cape to Cape. We are loading in these guns. Um, I know it's going to be really fast. Uh, 52 Ks has one little climb in the middle. Um, a lot of single track, the highway to hell. Uh, I've heard a number of warnings about the, the limestone rocks on highway to hell and a couple of other sections so it is uh, I don't know it's one of those ones where I think you've got to look after yourself you've got to finish so it's what we'll be planning to do. The elite teams are out first on the Mr Barvel stage, leaving the winery and heading south on a fast gravel section towards the Barana Forest. The epic series is all about pairs racing. With categories for men, women and mixed pairs, there is something for every rider. There are 49 teams across the women's in mixed pairs, with mixed pairs especially popular. Women's pairs is definitely different to mixed pairs. Um, I love the challenge that comes with mixed pairs in terms of that the females are usually always the weakest link and you're having to work a lot harder. But the challenge of racing women's pairs, for me being now the strongest link, which is not something I'm used to, it's about 
supporting her to be able to achieve finishing one of these events, which is a, a huge achievement in itself. Yeah, we love it. I think it's um, something we love to do together and I think we just work together, we train together. Um, yeah, it's, it's good fun and then we're, it's a holiday as well, not a, just a bike race. There's nothing leisurely about the pace at the front of the men's pairs. The yellow jersey duo are well aware that the pressure is now on the teams around them to make a move and claw back some time. This is the longest stage of the week at 54 kilometres and 763 metres of altitude gain. But it's fast and rolling all the way out to the coast where the steepest climb of the day comes just a few k's from the finish. This has been a favourite stage for many riders in the past with the spectacular Kari Forest the main reason. From above, the forest looks much as it always has, but beneath the canopy and at ground level, there is still the lingering evidence of a significant bushfire that blazed through the forest less than a year ago. So there was 8,000 hectares of forest burnt out. So, yeah, after the bushfires, it was quite devastating, but it's so good just to be able to get back in there now. And all the birds are singing again, so it's starting to get back to the same feel. This is a limestone ridge, and this ridge is around 1.2 million years old. And this beautiful limestone ridge goes from Cape Naturalist in the north to Cape Lewin in the south. We have beautiful forests, and it's not often you can go to beautiful caves, the beautiful forest, and then go straight down to the beach afterwards for a swim. I'm very lucky to be working at a few of the caves, which is Lake Mammoth and Jewel Cave. And I'm also now a conservation officer for the Capes Foundation, which is a new part of the Margaret River Bustleton Tourism Association that is actually going to look after all the conservation areas around the caves and help regenerate and rehabilitate the forest and the habitat after all the big bushfires that we've had. I've done for 12 years, 12 races, this is the 12th one. No, I love coming back each year. Each year is hard, it never gets any easier, but it's always good fun doing it. The first year that we did it, it was actually Cape to Cape, from Cape Lewin down to Cape Naturalist, basically. I won, which I was really stoked about, and uh, won the Masters division. And back then it was a thousand dollar check. <laughs> I went home with that, I was pretty stoked. <laughs> The unjustly named Highway to Hell takes the riders from the forest to the coast. The stark contrast between the forest and the coastal scenery makes this stage one of the best in the events. The women's leaders, Ella Bloor and Lucy Vanderschelt, have bounced back from an early crash on the gravel and are holding on to the lead. And it's the Masters women's leaders, Joe Bennett and Rihanna Farrell, just behind them, also pushing hard. Trying to keep up with Joe Bennett, man. Yeah. Even the cameraman's beating me, almost. The Giant Australia off-road team launched their attack on the yellow jersey, but only managed to drop third place, Trek Comtel. As the lead riders head into the winery finish area, it's looking like a four-man sprint to decide the stage honours. Though side. teammate Reese Tucknot is right there, Adam Blazovich can't hold on to the yellow jersey duo, and it's Odoms and Johnston who take the second stage victory of the week and secure another day at the top of the general classification. The Trek Comtel pair of Telly Lane Welsh and Joel Green cross in third, one minute behind. Always after like that highway to hell bit, turn on the fire, there's always a few attacks there and we just marked the boys and made sure that we sort of had a little bit left in the tank and it was a nice little sprint at the end really. I was, <laughs> I was expecting a bit more but it was good. Yeah, from then these mountain bike sprints with pairs, you kind of just got to do your own thing and just, I think you can go quite early and um, yeah, it's just sort of that point where everyone's a bit tired so you can you can go early and hang on, you hang on and you don't, you don't, but yeah. Sort of, um, You've only got to beat the second guy so it's good in that respect. 
That's all that I ever think. Don't be the last guy across the line. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's always tough coming into a sprint finish in a pairs race. You know, you have to either go two and three or one and three for the uh, to get up for the win. But, you know, we, uh, we tried everything we could on the stage and, yeah, coming down to a sprint finish was probably the best outcome uh, based on how we all went out there. After riding close together for the whole 54 kilometres, the Open women's leaders, DBBM, and the Masters women's pair from Kalamunda Cycles take the wins in their respective categories just a minute and 20 seconds apart. A crash early in the stage wasn't enough to derail Lucy van der Schalk, a regular on the free ride and enduro racing scene. Yeah, just in the pack at the start, someone tried to go around right on the outside and slid out on the gra on the pea gravel on the edge. Nothing much I could do at that point because it was so tight. So yeah, just went for the jump and jump and roll. Yeah, we were still with the lead sort of men um, in mixed pairs at that stage, and we'd already dropped all the other women. So if we'd stayed in that bunch a bit longer, we would have probably had a bit of an easier day. But I feel like. The hard days make the good ones seem better and it's they always make for a good story so yeah it is what it is. Have you found the views? <laughs> Mate, there's nowhere else I want to be. <laughs> uh, I'm lucky enough to live here as well. <sighs> So why else, on your days off, wouldn't you just come and ride up big hills over and over again? <sighs> oh, amazing. First time I've done the, this, this stage here. And uh, last year I wasn't here. But I uh, love it, love it. It's just a getaway called Highway to Hell. Beautiful views. It's quite the opposite of Highway to Hell. <laughs> So, it is, eh? It's been an epic day. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, our day's been good. Survived the highway to hell. Was very distracted by the scenery. Um, but it was awesome. It was real good. Today is perfect weather for me. So, yeah, loving it. For the Team M Sisters pair, loving life has a whole other meaning. The duo were brought together a couple of years ago by a shared health condition. A few years ago I did an article, an interview about being an athlete with multiple sclerosis and uh, a couple of years later I got a message from someone on Instagram saying I've just been diagnosed, I've read your story, we've got a lot in common, I could use some advice at this time and uh, it was Sarah. I reached out just basically just to say hey thanks for sharing your story, it really like it was such a positive thing for me to see and then yeah we kind of became mates from there. Uh, so MS is an autoimmune disease uh, affecting the nervous system, so affecting primarily the brain and spinal cord. It's the uh, most common neurological disease affecting young people um, and three times more women than men, generally diagnosed between 20 to 40 years of age. It's right, I'm getting better and better. It's like almost a vomit-inducing fear of just, is my life over? What is my life going to look like going forwards? and there's always someone who knows someone who knows someone who had MS and they're in a wheelchair. But and nowadays, uh, because everyone's diagnosed often so much quicker and they can get on medication so much quicker, the days of actually being confined to a wheelchair are actually few and far between. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of us, there's Olympic athletes that are out there that have MS. Um, so there's a lot of us out there that are just living totally normal lives. Um, we just happen to have MS. If we don't look like what uh, the, the instant mental image is, that's great, we're doing a good job. Um, but it's, it, it, you know, use it or lose it is such a cliche and old thing to say, but it's absolutely true. You go from a stage of thinking about MS and everything associated with it 17 times a minute, and your goal is to get back to normal people life with normal people worries. But, you know, and so we're doing everything right and doing everything that we can, but there's still an element of uncertainty as there is in anyone's life. So live as vibrantly as you can, as you said today, because you're not guaranteed any of it, whether you have MS or not. Um, and MS is a really, a diagnosis is a really good way to remind you that you don't have anything guaranteed. So every time I tick something off, it's an assurance that I'm going to be okay. This is going to be fine. Um, and so that's been mentally really important for me in, in building resilience.
you know, I received two messages this morning from people that have seen what we've been doing over the last couple of days. Um, one of them local to here who's uh, got in touch and just said, you know, thanks for that. It's, it's given me got a lot of confidence, but talking to someone newly diagnosed, I would just say, look, you can take charge of this. It is not the end of your life. You can achieve so many brilliant things. Um, you know, set your goals, keep your goals and, and chase them because it's not a death sentence. You are so not done and you've got an opportunity to live a, a better than normal life. With the biggest stage of the week out of the way, the riders can rest up and recover, knowing that the days get easier from here. The only jersey to change shoulders after stage two was the highly competitive mixed pairs. The rock sot roller pair of Peter Mullins and Jared Moroni take the stage win by two minutes, 14 seconds from yesterday's winners, M. Vieto and Carl Michelin Beard. The RCC duo of Holly Harris and Mitch Docker remain in third. Jared had a better day today and when I was struggling on the hills, he was able to give me good pushes to stay with uh, M and Carl. And yeah, we just kind of made the difference where we think it matters for us and that's on that technical technical aspect of the racing. Yeah, I love it. And you're saying stage three and four probably suit you a bit better? Yeah, we hit two really mint days of single track now, so I think that's kind of our domain. We like flat riding. <laughs> the hills are enjoyable because we get the downhills, but yeah, we'd, we prefer to ride flat single track. <laughs> How's the body holding up, mate? Day three. Yeah, not good. Uh, cramps everywhere. Um, Frankenstein walking around the house, kind of thing. But we're enjoying it. The motivation's still high, so yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, but today we're looking forward to it. Um, the compartments, um, the trails—they're all quite. They've been done up recently, so they're, they're looking good. They're quick. They're fast. They're flowing. So yeah, it should be a good day. Cake to cake, 2022. We're at stage three. We're back at home in the Margarita. It's one of the favourite stages of all of the riders. And why is that? Single track. And today, the best single track we have ever, ever had. And we're going to have a super day. We can talk for a second. This is the day that the whole field looks forward to. Margaret River has invested heavily over the past few years in creating a single track trail network to rival anywhere in the world. Stage three of the Cape to Cape makes the absolute most of it. Just metres from the edge of town, the riders hang a hard left and head up into the forest. Stage three takes riders on 42 kilometres of single track heaven through the pines and compartment 10. Starting and finishing at the Ginniversity Distillery, this promises to be one to remember. Margaret River has an incredible network of trails for all abilities and Stage 3 makes marvellous use of all of them. Things start fast and flat with a blast along the rail trail before diving off into the numerous single track diversions. For any keen mountain biker, this is paradise. Some have raced here before and know the trails well, but for Mitch Docker, riding with Holly Harris, the whole experience is new. This is the former professional road cyclist's second ever mountain bike stage race event. I think, like, potentially if I'd gone on for, let's say, two or four more years, I would have just been completely over it, done with it, never touching a bike again. But I was lucky enough to be able to sort of make that decision because of other reasons, you know, family and, and wanting to come back to Australia that I still really want to ride a bike. I just didn't want to race it at that level. I probably just couldn't race it at that level, to be honest with you. Coming back this year, I was like, well, what, what, what happens when you're not racing in the world tour? What, what else is out there? And then I sort of found this event. I found other events, gravel events, mountain bike events, and that sort of just kept me happy all year. You know, I've got no expectation about this. You know, if, if we were doing some kind of, you know, Cape to Cape road race, it'd be the worst thing ever for me because I like, oh, I knew how good I could be or what I used to do, and I'm not there anymore. But 
this is completely different. I've got no expectation. I'm out there just like everyone else working it out and mix pairs. I'm, and in a new event that I've never done before too. So I'm trying to work that out. I'm trying to work with Holly who understanding her limits psychologically, how we work together. It's just everything's new and exciting. It's been really fun to get to know him um, just over the last two races because when we started Reef to Reef we'd never met before so um, and then we met one day and we were racing the next day so it was like pretty full on like it's a lot to race like mixed pairs because the woman is usually like we're fully in the red zone all the time but he's been really good he's really chill um, super relaxed and not as bad at mountain biking as he makes out like he's been picking up really quick um, yeah it's been fun Yeah, I do feel out of my depth. Once we go on the single trail especially, it's a lot more down to technique. I try and use my legs, but suddenly I'm at threshold and then people are saying, when you're ready, mate, can I get past? I'm thinking, am I not going hard now? But it's down to technique. Following someone who knows how to ride a mountain bike, you actually learn a lot more. Well, I do anyway, because I can see the line she's taking and potentially if I'd ridden it myself, I would have smashed over a really bad line or try to go down this way. And I follow her and, and sort of understand how to do it better. I think we're gonna do the whole triple ground together, which will be really cool. So um, I've got a bit of time between now and Port to Port. So hopefully we can both get a bit of time on the mountain bike and, and it'll be good to finish like all three together. I think it'll be a pretty cool thing to do. And like, I, I don't know if they've even got a crown for it, but I would like to tick off the epic races. Everyone, you know, the the epics over in New Zealand, in Switzerland, and the Cape Epic. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that, but I like the idea of that. Like, it's pretty easy to get the bug. You come here, you go as hard as you can, and everyone's in a really good spirit. It's so different to road racing. Everyone's just having a good time, but also serious in the race. There needs to be an element of seriousness that I need to get that out of my system too. I'm competitive, so it's a nice balance between competitiveness and enjoying yourself. The Cape to Cape, like sister events, Reef to Reef and Port to Port, is part of the global epic series. For super keen riders, there are eight events to complete across Europe, Australia and Africa, culminating with the ABSA Cape Epic, the pinnacle event of the mountain biking world. Today, however, is all about the flowing single tracks of Margaret River. Ew. After two to three hours of berms, rollovers, tabletops and gravel, the riders arrive back at University Distillery in Margaret River. The smiles plastered across the faces of every rider tell the story of the day. The Margaret River stage has delivered once again. Well, we're just a bunch of silly old goats that like riding together. <laughs> We have a lot of fun, most of us road bike together, a couple come from Melbourne every year because this is an event we just can't stop coming to. It's just so good. You know, the tracks are in great conditions. Byron Up was amazing, new, new tracks this year right in the south, but these tracks are just anything. These are amazing. I've run out of talent a couple of times over the bars and <laughs> such like, but wow, what a day. John Odoms and Brendan Johnston managed to extend their lead on day three, taking three wins from three. Peter Mullins and Jared Moroni now lead by over five minutes in the mixed pairs. Ella Bloor and Lucy van der Schalk have one hand on the women's trophy, winning stage three by five minutes 20 from total rush off-road. Though the stage is over, the great work continues. Every year, the good people of Bike Doctor and Dismantle are at the Cape to Cape helping both the riders and the local young people. 
Dismantle is a youth charity that uses social enterprise as its method for creating impact. So Bike Doctor is a social enterprise. It trades commercially, but it's got a, a social impact um, goal as well. So it's not for profit um, in the sense that all its, all its um, revenue is going back into youth programs. So we've got a group of young guys from the local high school washing bikes all week here at Cape to Cape. Some of them are just stoked about trails and bikes, um, but others are just keen for a, a job. Uh, but Dismantle has other social enterprises like our gardening business Renew Property Maintenance, but it's all about the basic soft skills of being a worker. So what does it take to turn up on time? What does it take to receive critical feedback and not, you know, go off the, you know, lose your nut? Um, all the basics of, um, yeah, taking care of your sleep routine and having a uniform clean. The, the things that a, a, a caring adult will teach you, um, but if you don't have that in your life, you're just gonna miss out on it, so. It's my first ever Cape to Cape, first ever cycling event actually, so I'm a total novice, but my love is uh, single speed steel. Uh, so that's what I picked up this week. Um, I've, I rode today with some suspension and gears, and I'm very grateful for that, because it was flowy and fast, and I really needed those things. So Dunsborough tomorrow, which is exciting. Um, yeah, looking forward to getting back on the single speed as the plan. So half single speed, half of gears, um, just to say I've done it, I guess. So yeah, down for the challenge. After three epic days, the Cape to Cape takes one final step north to Wise Wines in Dunsborough, just a stone's throw from Cape Naturalist. This is the magnificent setting for Stage 4. There are always mixed feelings on day four. The heart wants to hang on and keep the good times rolling, but for the majority of the field, the body is ready to call it quits and have a rest. Yeah, man, I'm exhausted today. I'm just going to have a little lie down. I'm going to take this and I'm going to have... That's going to be like halfway through. I'm just going to take this out and I'm just going to have a little lie down and do a bit of a stretch and, yeah. It's been pretty good. Day one was uh, a bit rough. Day two, uh, with the rain and stuff. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a tough one. But everyone loved the single track on day three and uh, hopefully everyone enjoys day four. Yeah, it's gotten better every single day. I wasn't a big fan of day one. And day two was a little bit better, but day three yesterday was fantastic. It's some of the best single track I've ever seen. I live in California now, oh, yeah. and uh, it was just, yesterday was just unreal. So much fun. Uh, we are from Singapore. So we are here to smash the race. <laughs> yeah, I think we are looking forward to the final stage. I, for me, I'm, uh, it's my first time this, this time around. He, he's, he's the second time. So this is something new for me. And the weather also is way different from what we, we are used to. So we're trying to get, uh, try to climatize everything, get everything good and so far everything being well. <laughs> For the elites, this is the final roll of the dice. One last opportunity to take out the stage or even take the overall titles. Still in the leader's jersey, despite crashes and mechanicals and, you know, being hunted down like literal carrots in the orange jersey. Usi came down pretty hard in stage two and then yesterday I was pretty much in single speed all day, but we just managed to enjoy the trails and have a good time. And yeah, we've managed to hold on and hopefully we can do the same today. Yeah, very tight race in the last couple of days. Unfortunately, lost a little bit of time yesterday, but I think fast stage today and final stage. So we'll see how, if we can have some fun and maybe get up for the W. It'll probably come down to a sprint. It's quite a short stage, only 30 Ks or a little bit over 30 Ks. So. Not very long racing time for us, but uh, I think there's enough time there and enough single track and open road stuff to make something happen. As has been the case for the last two days, the elites are away first, with the slower waves to follow, and back in the pink dots are the M sisters pair of Sarah and Kat. For them, this will be a special day indeed. I'm excited about this one, but day four is also feeling like it's going to be a tough performance. I've been hyping her up about pea gravel, and uh, she's already seen a snake this morning. So we're all we're on high energy, that's for sure. 
Um, and it's such a good feeling. The last day is the day you just kind of take it all in and go, wow, I've really done that. And on the finish line, it's always a bit of a bit of an emotional moment, a bit of a self-pat on the back. So I, I'm looking forward to experiencing that again. Stage four could be best summed up as short and sweet. From Wise Wines, the riders take a loop out to the beach before heading back through the grounds on some brand new single track. The stage then heads down towards Dunsborough for a 16k loop around the Dunsborough Country Club trails, finishing back at Wise Wines once again. The elite men are quickly off the front of the bunch, driving the pace through what will be a hard and fast stage. The contrast between the north and the south is marked. The towering Kari forests of Lewin and Baranup have been left behind, replaced by the low coastal scrub, sandy soils and pea gravels of Cape Naturalist. The lead men are first back to Wise Wines at the halfway point. Giant off-road Australia, Trek Comtel and the yellow jersey holders are first to sample the new trails through the winery. Still in the mix on day four and leading the solo Grand Master category for the women is Sharon Heap, a national champion, world champion, and now looking set to add Cape to Cape champion to her impressive CV. Okay, so I've won possibly 40 odd national titles. I'm not quite sure exactly because I've won so many, I can't remember. I probably started probably very late in life, 35 years old, which is I'm already a veteran rider, but I just, um, yeah, just loved it. And uh, took me five years to actually figure out how to ride a bike <laughs> and get half decent. And then I've just gone from race to race and just started with national titles and won them. So I just kept going. And uh, then I decided to go overseas and try my luck overseas and um, yeah, surprised myself and won a world title when I was 55 years old. So <laughs> you never know until you try. <laughs> That's what I, I say. Uh, this is my 26th year of racing mountain bikes and other bikes, <laughs> and all bikes. <laughs> I think I'm addicted to cycling and um, yeah, just you can't, once it's in your blood, you just can't get rid of it. Everyone that's come out to cheer us on, it's just brilliant. How's the stage so far? Pretty fun. Some of the single tracks pretty good. Um, energy levels are way up now that we've started. So good. So good. With just a few kilometres to go, the yellow jersey holders Brendan Johnston and John Odoms have made their bid for a clean sweep of stage victories. They've dropped the giant Australia off-road pair of Rhys Tucknot and Adam Blazovic, who are now a minute behind, still riding with solo GC rider Mark Chong. As the finish line comes into sight for the yellow jersey holders, they have extended their lead and crossed the line in one hour, 20 minutes and 32. The pair take a clean sweep of stage wins and the overall title of Cape to Cape 2022. Giant Australia off-road looks set for another sprint finish with Trek Comtel, but a missed turn in the closing seconds hands the advantage to Reese Tucknot and Adam Blazovic with the Trek Comtel duo in third. 
Peter Mullins and Jared Moroni's legs stay good through the final stage, ensuring that they hold on to the green jersey and the overall mixed pairs title ahead of M. Viotto and Carl Michelin Beard in second. Mitch Docker and Holly Harris's Cape to Cape adventure ends with third overall in the mixed pairs. <laughs> Mark Chong, he takes the solo GC title. Ella Bloor and Lucy Vanderschelt win the open women's pair. It has been a fabulous week of the best that Western Australia and the Margaret River region has to offer both on and off the bike. Fantastic weather, great trails, awesome companions and no doubt a few of the local wines and beers have been sampled along the way. After 14 editions, the Cape to Cape is still going strong, still providing the mix of scenery and excitement that riders from all over Australia and around the world have come to love. Of the thousand smiles crossing the finish line at the end of stage four, none are bigger or more meaningful than those of M sisters Catherine Ross and Sarah Gardner. We spent more time closer together today than some of the earlier days, so that's been really nice. Just poodling along, kangaroo spotting, <laughs> wildlife bingo for Sarah. Come, I saw a kangaroo in the wild. Well, it was on a golf course, but I'm gonna say it's in the wild. Like. <laughs> Seriously up there with one of the highlights for the week. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Wow. What a four days. Uh, Sarah, Catherine uh, from M Sisters, and uh, Joachim and uh, Vince. Well done. I'm so proud of you. You know, we, we were pretty sure we'd connected pretty solidly online and, you know, spent the last couple of years talking to each other, but a week of living together has cemented her into the very small group of friends I would holiday with, which with most people, that's not a big group. So it's been a blast. It's been so much fun. Yeah, I guess it was a, a bit of a, not, I wouldn't say a bucket list, but definitely just a personal goal that I wanted to set to kind of prove to myself that I could push myself and I could challenge myself and that I was going to be okay. Um, and I have been, and I've been great. And I guess, yeah, cats kind of help guide me through the whole MS journey, and then to help guide me through the last four days has, has just been amazing. Like, I am forever grateful to this woman. Um, and yeah, it's just been, yeah, I don't know, just a really solid cementing of our friendship, and yeah, just love it a bit. <laughs> Now all that is left to do is to grab some food and celebrate the wins, big or small. Pop the corks, let the champagne flow and reflect on a week well spent. Cape 2022. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. It has been excellent having you here. Thanks to all our partners and our sponsors. The riders, of course, you have been fantastic. We had over 1,100 registrations at the uh, start of the race. We hope to uh, see you at next year's Cape to Cape, Rip to Rip, Port to Port, wherever you are. Sensational having you along. Stay safe and uh, keep that rubber side on the trails. Have fun, babes.